To our Sunrise Smart Start, a Geneva man is dead after he was hit by a car while crossing the street. Ontario County Sheriff's deputies say the fatal incident took place yesterday evening around 5.30. The victim has been identified as 59-year-old Terrence Clem. Investigators say Clem was trying to cross 5 and 20 but did not use the crosswalk. We're told the driver stayed on scene and did call 911. That investigation is ongoing. In Monroe County, Sheriff's deputies are looking for a missing teenager. 16-year-old Sarah Wade was last seen near Ridgeway and Dewey Avenues Saturday in Rochester. She is described as 5 feet, 85 pounds, with brown hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing a gray zip-up hoodie with black leggings. She is not believed to be in danger, but anyone with information about where she is should call 911. Well, beginning today, only American citizens and residents will be able to fly to the U.S. from eight nations in southern Africa. The travel restrictions come in response to concerns over the newly discovered Omicron COVID variant. That variant was first discovered in South Africa, but top U.S. health officials warn it could spread quickly. We are joined by Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke with more on this this morning live in D.C. Anna, good morning. Are health officials saying anything about another potential lockdown? down. Good morning. Well, we did hear from uh, Dr. Fauci yesterday who says it's just simply too soon to tell if a lockdown or uh, new mandates will be needed. Uh, he says the next two weeks will be critical as they review the data uh, to determine uh, more and learn more about this new strain uh, to determine what the next few months are really going to look like. Um, but he did say that, quote, um, Americans should be prepared to do anything and everything, he says, to fight this new variant. Certainly another question top of mind, are these current vaccines that people are getting uh, and boosted with as well, uh, how will they uh, fare against this new strain? Do we have any feel for that at this point? Well, top health officials are saying it's going to take approximately two more weeks to determine that uh, if this new variant is resistant to the current COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, but Dr. Fauci uh, did say yesterday that um, he is encouraged that uh, the, pre uh, the vaccine right now uh, has worked to fight off and been effective on uh, other strains of the uh, virus. And so he is encouraged by that, but he's really using uh, this to push that uh, the message that uh, to get for Americans to get the vaccine or the booster shot uh, as they wait for that more information and more evidence over the next two weeks. All right, Anna, thank you for the live update this morning from D.C. Omicron has also been confirmed in Canada now. Health officials say this marks the first two North American cases of this highly contagious strain just days after the World Health Organization called it, quote, a variant of concern. Now, earlier this month, the U.S. opened its borders to fully vaccinated Canadian travelers. The emergence of the Omicron variant comes amid a surge in new COVID cases across the globe. Now, here in New York, state health officials reporting 6,000 new cases of COVID during yesterday's update. About 3,000 people are hospitalized with the virus statewide, nearly 400 in the ICU. New York's testing rate for positivity is now over 4%. Happening today, Governor Hochul is expected to provide an update on the state's next steps in combating COVID. State Sometimes health officials say the Omicron variant has not been detected here in New York or any part of the U.S. as of yet. Now, locally, COVID cases are on the rise, leading to a new push for vaccinations and boosters. St. Michael's Church in Rochester hosting a food donation, donation event yesterday with the option for community members to get the COVID vaccine as well. Organizers say the North Clinton area of the city is in desperate need of outreach with increased crime and low vaccination rates. I have seen the consequences of death too much on Clinton Avenue, whether it's from overdoses or murders or, for that matter, COVID. The reason that we do the vaccine is because we have a duty to protect our people, and we are the messengers. Well, officials with St. Michael say they plan to host similar events in the future in collaboration with the Monroe County Health Department. National news this morning, a wildfire in North Carolina has burned over 230 acres there. Park officials say Pilot Mountain State Park will stay closed all week as emergency crews attempt to contain the flames. Officials say that fire has spread over 60 acres in just the last night. Turning our attention back home to our forecast, uh, nothing to talk about that way, uh, but a chill in the air and some fresh snow for some as well. 
as they get up and get going on this Monday, James. Yeah, for sure. Uh, maybe we were holding off on the exercise uh, after the holiday weekend until this morning. So you're thinking about getting out and uh, going on a walk, maybe going on a light jog. The temperature is generally right around low 30s. I've got 30s there, right around 30. A few spots, 28, 29 degrees. And if you're going to wait till the temperature climbs up, you're not really going to uh, get lucky, I guess, this afternoon as a number stay generally in the low to mid 30s. So we don't see a significant warm up today, but we do have it in the forecast as we get later in the week. We'll talk about the eight day as well as a bus stop forecast at the end of the show. Mark. All right, James, uh, thank you. Another check of the roads with our sunrise traffic. It is a good story after a couple of accidents earlier in the morning have cleared. You see smooth sailing along 390, 490, and 590 up to speed as well at this hour. To Elmira now, two historic churches there are closing their doors after a decree of relegation by the Catholic Di Diocese of Rochester. The locations, St. Peter and Paul and Our Lady of Lourdes. According to a notice on the parish website, once a church is relegated, it can no longer be used for Catholic ceremonies and the property can be sold as well. According to an Elmira Parish financial report, regular collections across all churches are down more than 7%, totaling more than $100,000. St. Peter and Paul opened in the 1840s and is the oldest parish in Elmira. Our Lady of Lords opened its doors in 1941. Well, today marks the second day of Hanukkah, the Jewish holiday known as the Festival of Lights. Carmela Boykin is live this morning with a look at how a local temple is celebrating the holiday safely during the pandemic. Carmela, good morning. Good morning, Mark. I'm outside Temple Brith Kodesh, where events are going to be held for each day of Hanukkah over the next week. I spoke with, excuse me, that this, this temple is unique because it contains a collection of over 200 menorahs that were donated about 30 years ago. Menorahs ranging in a wide array of themes and styles. I spoke with Senior Rabbi Peter Stein, who says he's looking forward to seeing his community coming together for the holiday. I can't tell you how excited we are to be doing things in person, still with lots of precautions. We'll be wearing masks, we'll be distancing, we're not doing uh, a full dinner like we do in, in most years, but compared to last year where everything was outdoors or online, it's really nice to be able to open our doors this year and celebrate Hanukkah. And on Saturday, December 4th, Temple Brith Kodesh will be collaborating with the Baden Street Settlement for a concert and to celebrate the settlement's 120 years. In Brighton, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Mark? All right, Carmela, thank you. Hanukkah goes until December 6th. For more local events happening during the holiday, head to rochesterfirst.com. And happy Hanukkah to all our Jewish friends out there. Time now for a check of the GRE Morning Business Report. The nation's trade gap narrowing out in October. According to the Commerce Department, the trade deficit contracting by more than 14% to $82.9 billion. That was better than expected. Thanks in part to a sharp increase in exports last month, imports did rise modestly as well. According to the Commerce Department, personal spending rising 1.3% in October. That was more than expected. Spending is a, clo a closely watched metric because consumers make up about two-thirds of all economic activity. Incomes rose and people saved more money as well. The FAA reporting more trouble in the sky. The agency is proposing more than $160,000 in fines against eight passengers where alcohol was allegedly involved. Those cases include alleged sexual harassment of a flight attendant, smoking marijuana, and yelling profanities at crew members. The fines range from $8,000 to more than $40,000. Along with the pandemic, President Biden dealing with a looming deadline. The U.S. will default on its debts October, or check that, December 15th, if no action is taken by Congress. As of now, the government is funded through Friday. Last week, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned the federal government will not be able to honor its financial commitments after the deadline unless Congress votes to raise or suspend the debt limit. Congressional Republicans have repeatedly said they will not support that measure. And now a look at what some folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Two of music's most iconic voices teaming up for a new concert special last night. One last time, an evening with Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga honoring Bennett's musical legacy. Bennett is 95 and battling Alzheimer's. They recorded this special at Radio City Music Hall in New York City back in August. And uh, caught just a little bit of that last night. 
Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, say this for Tony Bennett at 95, yeah. that voice is still oh. right on point. Yeah. Great show on Very CBS. Cool. I missed that, but I did catch the 60 Minutes Ready special yeah. that they did on, which mm -hmm. is very well done. Yes, as always. So, cool to see that, and uh, cool weather we've got, certainly, to yeah. start off this Maybe morning. even chilly. Yeah, yeah, I think might, so. Might it's, go beyond cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's winter jacket worthy, definitely, to start off uh, this morning. Mostly cloudy. We're starting to see a little bit of twilight. Uh, you can see that uh, here over Lake Ontario. Sun, you got plenty of time until the sunrise, uh, about 20 minutes after 7 a.m. Uh, bus stop forecast, uh, wet roads to start this morning, and we don't see much improvement in temperatures, just 30s as we get into the afternoon. Looking forward to seeing a little bit of sun, and anything that's on the ground should be melted as we get over the next couple of days. Uh, we've got 40s by Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, there you go. Hey, back to work and school. Uh, we hope it's a great day for everyone on this Monday. Our next update in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great one. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.